So I hope your week has been good again in the Lord. I hope that you have uh, continued to experience movements of God in your life. I hope that the Holy Spirit or that you've allowed the Holy Spirit to uh, help you to see areas of vulnerability in your life that all of us have. Man, I really hope it would be fantastic if there are relationships that are already deepening that you're able to very honestly share with other people some areas of vulnerability in your life that you can have a brother or sister come alongside you and and uh, minister to you and, and help you feel like you're not alone or help you know that you're not alone, that you're not the only one who's struggling and having a hard time. Uh, you will become increasingly comfortable with your own mess. It's one of the beautiful things about walking with the Lord is you just, you're just going to become comfortable with your mess in such a way that if other people have a problem with your messiness, that's really an indication that they're not comfortable with their messes yet. It really doesn't have anything to do with you. So uh, I'm a mess. Um, I need the power of Christ. And even as I rest in the power of the Lord, I make mistakes, I stumble, uh, I'm tempted and I fall. And when I fall, I ask for forgiveness and I get restored and away we go. In this session, we're going to look at what is called the way of rest. Uh, the way of rest is a particular method of walking in relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the way of rest, we are seeking to have a, a laid out uh, manner in which we walk with, with the Lord. We wanna have a, a system a limited system, of a structure of beliefs and practices that position us, that help us understand who God is, who we are, uh, what we should be doing, how we should be, the, the, the disciplines we should be practicing in this relationship so that we can walk in the fullness of everything that God has for us. And so we have the way of rest. It's called the way of rest because it was birthed out of the a promise that Jesus gives us in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And in that passage, Jesus says to us, come to me, Jesus says, come to me. It's an invitation from him to, to uh, come to him. Um, uh, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Uh, the weary are those who have been weary by the things of the world, the things that people have done to us. The heavy laden are those that are heavy burdened because of things we've done to ourselves. So we can get in that position because of things people, we can become exhausted because of things other people have done to us, but we can also be exhausted because of things that we've done to ourselves. Um, praise the Lord Jesus offers this invitation to both. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble of spirit and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ is to take his yoke upon us which is easy and light. It's not burdensome, it's easy and light. It's not gonna push me down, it's gonna lift me up. And I'm to learn from Jesus how to live life. And so the question for us became, what, would, what are the things Jesus would teach us in our lives so that we can experience the rest that Jesus intends us to experience? Uh, there have to be certain things that he would teach us, certain things that he believed in, certain things that he practiced in his own life that allowed him to live a life of rest that he can then go ahead and offer that to us. So we set about trying to discover those things and through that we developed the way of rest. The way of rest has five, five uh, principles to it. And we've tried to make these as easy as possible for even my six-year-old, my eight-year-old to remember. So the way of rest, in the way of rest is this. We believe in one God who's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in two kingdoms in conflict, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of darkness. We believe in three sources of bondage, sin, the world, and Satan. And we believe in four primary promises that can only be found in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Love, freedom, rest, and power. We believe God has promised, those, uh, promised us those things for our lives. We believe that Jesus died on the cross so that we would regularly experience as the normal condition of our lives, love, freedom, rest, and power. We believe those things as part of the way of rest. And then finally, number five, we believe in five disciplines. These are five practices that we engage in as the, as the practices of our faith, as the practices of our relationship with the Lord. And those disciplines are reflection, releasing, receiving, resisting, and responding. Reflecting, releasing, receiving, resisting, and responding. Now, those should seem very familiar to you because all throughout the on-ramp material, 
you have been led and challenged to reflect on certain things, to release certain things, to receive certain things through the Word of God and through the discipleship groups that you're a part of. You have been encouraged to resist uh, the work of the enemy as we as you work through. Uh, let your kingdom come. Your 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 will be done. You were exposed to the reality of the demonic and supernatural influences and sin and all of those things. And so you're already aware of, of resisting and how to do that in your lives. And then the last one is responding, which is just living obedient to the will of God uh, for our lives. Uh, unfortunately, according to the reality of the war that we live in, you can't just tell somebody, hey, go be faithful to the Lord. Just go obey God's word. And they'll just go, oh yeah, okay, I'll just go and, and obey God's word. You got to learn how to fight. You have to learn how to fight. If you will remember back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had the Word of God. They knew the Word of God. The Word of God for Adam and Eve was, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they had received the Word of God for their lives. But then we know what happened Genesis chapter 3. The enemy came in the form of a serpent and tempted Adam and Eve. And because they didn't fight Adam and Eve, because they didn't resist, they were not able to respond correctly to the word of God for their lives. So part of walking in the way of rest is properly receiving the word of God, but then being aware of the temptations, the persons and forces at work in this world, so that I can learn how to resist those temptations, so that now I can be faithful and respond to what it is that God is giving me to do as a man, as a husband, as a father, as a mother, as a provider, as an employee, as an employer, as a missionary, as a servant of the Lord, and whatever areas of your lives. So that the goal of the way of rest is to position you in the presence of God, most importantly. The goal of the way of rest is to position you in the presence of God to receive intimacy, to live in intimacy with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to live in that promised life of Jesus Christ for yourself, for yourself, to experience love, freedom, rest, and power. And then as you do that position now to live obediently and faithfully to whatever it is that God is calling you to do. So as you're praying through the Lord's Prayer and you get to the part say, let your kingdom come, your will be done, and the presence of God comes and the word of God comes for the will of God to be done in your life, because you have this structure now and you understand what it is to walk in the will of God, as the word of God comes, response happens. You're not delaying response. Okay, I know God has told me this is his will. Maybe I'll get around to it two years from now. You're responding appropriately. You're not getting out in front of the will of God. You're not getting behind the will of God. You're walking in the timing of God. You're walking in the flow of God. You're walking in the rhythm of the Holy Spirit because you have such confidence in your life. You have such structure in your relationship with God that it provides a foundation for you upon which you can walk with God, but then also you can see where deviations, where temptations are coming to lead you away from the will that God has for you. If you don't have a method, if you don't have a... Uh, prescribed manner in which you walk with God, you are actually in a vulnerable, increasingly vulnerable position of being exposed, um, uh, of, of your relationship with God just kind of drifting away because you have no anchor, you have no standard, there is no line with which you are walking, therefore there's no measure with which you can set yourself against, your life against. In the way of rest, there's a line that's been established where I'm walking wholeheartedly in the beliefs of one God and two kingdoms and three, three sources of bondage, but I'm also expecting with expectation to experience in my life the four promises that God has given us. These are promises. These are covenant promises of God. It's not maybe I get them, maybe I don't. It's that Jesus died on the cross for me to have this. And so as, I, as that's my standard, whenever I'm not experiencing those things, then I become aware of that. Now I have a standard with which I can see deviations. And now I'm aware, okay, I've slipped out somewhere. There's an attack that's come. There's a kink in my beliefs. I'm not practicing something correctly. I've got sin in my life and I can address that so I can be brought right back into the fold of intimate relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, experiencing everything that Jesus has for me, experiencing everything that Jesus has for me in my life. Uh, one of the other beautiful things about the way of rest when it comes to the disciplines of reflection, releasing, receiving, resisting, and responding is that there are very specific techniques that you can learn in each of these discipline areas that you can actually improve in. So you can learn a technique like using prayer to reflect. 
in the category of reflection, I can learn how to use prayer to reflect on God. There are very specific techniques that you will learn uh, to do that, that as you practice these things, you'll actually get increasingly better and more confident in your ability to reflect on the glory of God or the love of God or the faithfulness of God, but it provides this framework within which you will see improvement in these very specific techniques that you are learning over and against I'm praying just to pray and I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm praying or I'm fasting just to fast, but I don't know really what I'm doing or how my fasting fits in with my praying or with my worship or with anything else. You will learn how to use singing of songs in very specific ways to reflect on the Lord. As you have this structured framework that is not legalistic or binding or oppressive, but is actually freeing and liberating so that as you walk in this structure, you will actually become more uniquely who it is that God has made you to be than you would have otherwise. And then what will come out of this, the next step in this is that you continue to develop and understand the way of rest for your life. Now you have something you have a way of walking with Jesus that you have confidence in, that you know you can go and teach somebody else and train somebody else how to walk in this way as you have been taught and you have been trained. Now disciples are going to make disciples who are going to make disciples. As you have been trained in how to use the Lord's Prayer, now you can go and train others how to use the Lord's Prayer. If you have been trained in how to resist, you can go and train somebody else in how to resist. And it's just this beautiful um, uh, waterfall. There's this beautiful movement of, I've got a way of walking with Jesus that brings life. Now for the first time in my life, I feel like I have something to offer somebody else and I feel like I can communicate it. There's your confidence. Now when the will of God comes and you see this person as you're walking through campus or you're walking around Nacogdoches and the, and, and the Spirit of God comes and, and is leading you to go minister to this person, now you go with confidence because you know you have something to offer and you know you have a way of life that works and you know you're able to communicate that to them in such a way that they can get it because it was communicated to you in such a way that you got it. And now you can be the one who's doing that. And now the city of Nacogdoches is filled with the free army of the people of God looking to love and restore other people through personal discipleship and this powerful movement that doesn't necessitate inviting people to church or bringing them to a community group, which are great and wonderful, effective tools, but how much more effective, how much more powerful is it for you in the highways and byways as you're going, wherever it is that you go, to be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit such that man, I can bring health and healing to this person, sharing my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I have the ability to raise them from ignorance in the Lord to complete maturity in the Lord, as God has done that same thing to me through this method of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ called the way of rest. Jesus says this in John chapter 14, verse 6. He says this very bold statement. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, many of us will focus on the, on the claim where, that Jesus says that no one will come to the Father but through him and will declare that there is no other path to heaven. There's no other path to being reconciled with the God of all creation but through Jesus. And that is absolutely true. What we miss out on is the reality, the fullness of the reality of what Jesus says on the front end of that where he declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe in that, that Jesus is giving us a formula. He is the way. He is the manner in which we are to live according to truth. That way that he lives is defined by the truth of life. That when we walk in his way, according to his truth, we absolutely will experience his life. If we have all truth in very little way, we're not going to get any life. If we have all way and very little truth, we're not going to get any life. If we're trying to major in life, but we have no way and no truth, we will not have his life. Jesus makes this simple for us. There is a way, what we call the way of rest, that is according to truth that will absolutely, absolutely produce the life that he promised for you to have and for us to have. I pray 
that you will adopt this way or some other way, some other method of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that in that, you will never compromise and never allow yourself to be satisfied with anything less than the fullness of life that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, died on the cross to secure for you to have according to the promises of the God of all creation. This is what it is to know God, and this is what it is to walk with Jesus.